This is Al McGee with YETicket.com. I'm going to talk to the cast and the director for the wonderful, funny film, Stilling Chaplin. First, we have the director. His name is Paul Tanter. Hello. I'm glad. To, how you doing, Paul? I'm good, thanks. How you doing, Al? Great. We also have Doug Phillips and Simon Phillips. They wrote the film and they acting in the film also. How are you guys doing? Good, Al, good. We're very good. And we have Ken Bresners. He's an actor in the film and he plays against the name Schultz. How you doing, Ken? Real good, Al. Thanks for the time. Oh, I want to thank you guys. I really appreciate it. But first, let me start with Paul. Paul, why did you direct this film, Stealing Chaplin? What interests you in this film? Well, what happened was Ken Bresses came to me, pointed the gun at me and said, Paul, you're going to direct this film, okay? Uh, no, I, basically, uh, this is a, is a story that, um, it's been around for a long time, but I, I wasn't really aware of it. But Simon told me about it a while ago. The, so the story is actually, ba the, this film is, is inspired by real events. Back in 1977, I think, two Swiss guys went and dug up the actual body of Charlie Chaplin, who was buried in Switzerland. And they dug it up and they ran, so they tried to ransom it to the family. And ultimately they were caught by the police um, who managed to um, track them down through tracing phone calls and that kind of thing. And so they were caught, so they didn't get away with it. But it's such a weirdly comedic story. And actually the fact that it's true makes it so intriguing that when Simon told me about it, I, I, I first of all, I thought he was joking. And then when I looked it up, I thought I found out it was actually true. Um, and so he got um, Doug, who's a very talented writer, to write us a very uh, funny and comedic uh, story that sort of blended elements of comedy with crime caper and that kind of thing. Um, and we thought, where should we set it? And I thought, where would uh, these days, where that where it sort of encompasses capers and schemes and, uh, and cons and that kind of thing. And we thought Vegas uh, fits perfectly. And Ken, our producer, is based in Vegas and knows a lot of people there. And, has access to a lot of resources and locations. So it was sort of a happy marriage in the end of all of these elements coming together and forming the, the movie Stealing Chaplin. Where Simon and Doug, this is for both you guys, this one question. You created these characters and you put yourselves in this film and you wrote it. How did you decide who's going to be whom in this film? Well, we decided to play against true character and Simon asked me to write him in as being the suave, smooth, good looking one. And uh, I'd play the sarcastic kind of rough around the edges one instead of how we are in real life. <laughs> and, and, then, and then what happened? To um, uh, complete the journey for the complete characters of this film. Well, we, uh, we were just playing versions of ourselves, I think, because yeah. all we do all day long, Al, is just bicker. So we love each other, <laughs> but we just bicker all day long. So it made it really easy to jump in and jump out of characters. Yeah. Uh, pr pr pretty easy. I yeah, think. Simon basically gave me the broad strokes of the story <laughs> and then said, just make it us. So I did. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm going to hate myself for saying this. I guess. Go ahead, kid. But... Uh, um, when I first read uh, Doug's uh, screenplay, it, I was laughing out loud. I mean, he, he has a really good way of dialogue, uh, especially for these two brothers. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I think that, the, that having that kind of script really motivated us to want to do the, do the film. You know, oh, it, you, it, was, uh, it was great. But now... I'm going to pretend I never said that because, you know, it kind of goes to Doug's head a little bit. How much oh, it does? Do you pay Ken yeah. to say that? <laughs> Ken, uh, Ken dollars is on the way. That's yours. <laughs> I'll just put that down there. Now, uh, this is talking. to you, uh, Paul. Yeah. I guess it's to you or whoever wrote the script. I, I was just informed that many of the characters are based on old Charlie Chaplin characters in his film. Who came up with that idea and how do you continue that idea in this film? I think that was Doug in the script, wasn't it? So a lot of the characters yeah. are, uh, are, are, are named after either real life uh, silent movie actors like Harold Lloyd and, um, and you know, Buster Keaton and people like that. 
but and then some of the characters in the film are named after characters in Chaplin movies. But Doug, that you baked that in from the start, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Uh, part of it is my admiration for what Chaplin did in The Great Dictator, where he he named the dictator Heinkel because the name has Jewish origins, just to get up Hitler's nose and aggravate him. And I thought, wow, that was just brilliant. So as a kind of silent tribute to him doing that, I just reused the names. Doug respects that. Any person who goes to that lens to aggravate another man that he'll never meet. So that's something Doug aspires to. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, Doug, would, Doug would don't respect a man. It's like he went to great lengths to do that. It's he like, did. To annoy he people. Did. And somehow Doug thought, I could do that. And I well, pulled it up. Well, you got Ken playing shoots. Well, who who is shoots? Who's shoots related to far as Chaplin films? And then after you answer that, then Ken, why did you want to play Schultz? Well, Schultz is the name of an actor in, uh, the, I believe it was uh, The Little Tramp. It's in one of um, Chaplin's earlier works. I just went through IMDb picking names after I'd taken <laughs> the idea of Idol. I just picked names from his movies that wow. seemed to suit my character. Because wow. when I write a script, unless they have names, I can't really understand my characters. So I, I went that way about it. But so, Ken, in, in, terms, sorry, in, terms of, in terms of what made Ken perfect for the role, uh, it was a role of, of this sort of shady, um, quite sinister, dangerous um, mob boss. And we thought, who better to play that than a movie producer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But the, the other part of that, Al, is that if if I do the the role, then it's one less actor to pay. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's a producer, all right. So, so you know, so that was the the, the big attraction for me. But you know, all kidding aside, it was a great role, and uh, and I love working and being with these guys on the set as we we are, and you know, and it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I can imagine how that set was. That with with some jokes and banter going on in between yeah. takes, but how how did you control that, uh, Paul, uh, yeah. for for shooting the film? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of stuff on the floor that you had to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, you're not wrong there. I mean, it's it was a very tight script, so obviously we shot everything that was scripted. But what's great about um, Simon and Doug is that they can, you know, they're very good at improvising. So. Uh, once we'd got what we needed, I could say to them, okay, on this one, let's do something a bit different and, you know, we can improvise and that kind of thing. And, you know, the characters are kind of ba loosely based on themselves. So they're able to tap into that um, chemistry and that history they've, they've already got with each other. And I think that comes across quite well in their scenes. A lot of people have said to me, one of the things they really enjoy about this most is, is the relationship between the two guys and that banter and back and forth between them. Uh, sort of dropping in two oddball Brits into this, uh, into this you know, sort of dark uh, American uh, caper seems to be quite a good combination. Mm. You, yeah. wouldn't, you, wouldn't think, you wouldn't think the two things would go together quite so well, but, Who, but they seem to. Who you an oddball, is it? Me or Doug? Uh, well, I will yes. say you, Simon. Oh, you're talking <laughs> to me or? Oh. <laughs> anybody. Oh, oh, I, would say, I would say you, Simon, in the film because when you put, when you, with your dialogue and the character, just like your brother, I couldn't understand if you were serious or not. Were you joking when you start saying things? Just like the idea of stealing Chaplin, you, in, the, in, the, in one scene you said, well, you know, I was drunk and I was just joking. And oh, Doug said, yeah, that's I took you seriously. <laughs> that's, that's Doug, that's Doug, that's right. Yeah. Simon, and, you know, Simon doesn't drink. <laughs> I will drink yeah. water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got your uh, money back, Ken. Yeah. I, 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 I think a lot, a, a lot of British humour is done quite deadpan. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff is sort of baked into sarcasm and done quite seriously, but ultimately with a bit of a wink, uh, a wink, and you know, a tongue, a tongue in cheek. Um, so there is very sort of dry British humour that comes out through this, um, through these guys. Oh yeah. I understood that because uh, first I said, oh, yeah, this is British humor. So I got to really pay attention to it and understand it because I, 
I, I, that's not, that's that's me far as British humor. This type of British humor, because you're right, it's deadpan. It's it's not outrageous like some other films that you would see from different places and British humor. I, I enjoy British humor very much, so yeah, I really do. You know, also Simon often pointed out that when you have two brothers arguing, you can get away with a couple of things you normally can't because you know down deep they're brothers, they love each other. And so they can go a little further on some of their, uh, their back and forths. But you know, at the end of the day, they're all going to go out and have a drink and love each other anyway. So, um, and, and that's something that you can get away with with family, uh, with family comedy. Oh, yeah. Uh, they really did a lot of that in this film. But uh, getting back to you, Ken, you one of the producers, and you, you really enjoyed this. How did you get some of the other actors and for, for example you got wayne newton in here <laughs> is he a friend of yours <laughs> no, well not really i've met him a few times uh previous to the movie and uh, most recently um uh we were i had dinner with him um on another matter looking uh, a company i was working with was looking for a spokesman and so when the idea came up and, and Simon and, and Doug came up with the idea of maybe making a cameo of Wayne, he was a, a much more approachable. And uh, actually Simon did most of the, uh, the communication after the introductions, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, yeah, and, and I'll tell you one thing. He is the nicest, I, and I'm not saying, he is the nicest guy you ever want to meet. I am not. Oh, yeah. Sure. The almost unbelievable, nicest, genuine guy. And uh, it was just a pleasure having him there. By the way, his wife and his daughter are also in the movie. Oh, I bet they're happy with that. It was a lot. It was, it was, <laughs> it was just a, like you said, it was a great set. I mean, we had a lot of good people, both, on, you know, in front of the camera, camera, behind the camera, and in the little gallery that we had. It was, it was wonderful. And Paul, were you happy with Wayne Newton once, oh, once they decided on him? <clears throat> very much so. Um, I was I was kind of aware of who he was. Um, you know, he's, he's not as big in the UK as he is in, a, in the US. I was kind of aware of who he was. And then once I got there, um, and also we went to one of his shows um, uh, that he puts on, uh, you know, an evening of music and comedy and, and bits. And, uh, and it was great. And yeah, like I was very, very pleased with him. He's a very talented actor. I mean, his acting CV goes back sort of, you know, 40, 50 years. But I think, you know, what really, make, what really makes him stick out in my mind is that, as Ken said, he's, he's absolutely the nicest guy you'll ever meet. And he's so nice that he helped us out. He really got us out of a sticky situation in that we were mid-shoot and we were due to do the um, cemetery scene, the digging up of the uh, coffin right. uh, in, in two days. And the cemetery that we were going to do it in suddenly, but they pulled out. They said, no, we, we can't film here anymore. We don't want to film a scene of someone digging up a coffin because it won't look good for us. And we were kind of like, we were getting quite desperate. And we, filmed, we were filming with Wayne that day. And he said, well, how's it going? And we said, well, it's going well, but we've got this problem with the cemetery. And he said, why didn't you come and shoot it in my backyard? And we sort of laughed and we kind of scoffed a little bit. And we said, look, I think we need something a bit bigger than a backyard. And he <laughs> just said, look, come and see my backyard. Okay? And if, if you don't like it, you can, you, know, you can still find somewhere else, but come and take a look at it tonight. So we went to his place that night. And his place is a 27 acre horse farm where he breeds yeah. Arabian horses, mm -hmm. lush green trees, um, you know, huge lawns, uh, a, a pond in the middle of it, bridges going over the pond. Um, and he said, how about this? And we were like, yes, thank you. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Yep. And it was great. And we put, and we dressed in some fake gravestones and a grave, uh, some fake uh, stuff. And, and then two, two nights later, we were there digging a very deep hole in the middle of Wayne Newton's very plush lawn. Paul, so Paul, that... was, Paul was very good at supervising the digging. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember you doing any of the digging, Paul. I was, uh, I I was busy checking something. Uh, Bliss, by the blisters, mate. Blisters, yeah. <laughs> oh, re those are real blisters? <laughs> yeah. From digging? Really yeah. digging hard, huh? Yeah. They told me I was out in the movie if I didn't dig the hole. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna tell you, I, 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 I'm a former resident of Vegas, and I really love the way you all show Vegas also. I really enjoyed that. But what I was more interested in 
the cars that you had in this in this uh, movie, those are nice vintage cars that I really enjoyed. Now, who idea was that, Doug Simon? Who idea was it was Ken, actually, Ken's idea? Ken, the producer. I, yeah, I have a good friend of mine. Only because we got him for free. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I have a good friend of mine that wanted to work uh, as a, a runner uh, on the on the film. And he happened to have a, a few really nice vintage cars, Ooh, nice. which we were able to put in the movie. And, uh, and you know, from a producing standpoint, and if I can save a buck, you know, and, of course. and still enhance the on-screen quality, it really, it really did work out nice. Oh. And uh, we, time, we were happy. I know, Ken, I know we were trying to save money, but next time we've got to spend a bit more money on the actors. <laughs> <laughs> we can get somebody decent. <laughs> you can't you, hey i work for free so you can't criticize <laughs> we must be able to afford more than three dollars <laughs> you told me seven uh well there's inflation you wouldn't understand it's very confusing the numbers now doug and simon as brothers do you all enjoy working with each other i mean i can see that you do <laughs> <laughs> No, just no. I, in all seriousness, I'm going to need eight bucks to come back. There's <laughs> no more of this seven dollar nonsense if I have to work with it. Just Doug just, just broke the budget. Doug, Hold on, Doug. Now we can't make the movie. Doug, is, is that Canadian or U.S.? <laughs> English, Jap English, <laughs> Japanese yen. <laughs> Man, Paul, I can see you what you had to deal with while they were shooting, they are hilarious together, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, some, uh, sometimes all you, all you really have to do is just, is just turn the camera on and, and just let them, let them run crazy with it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and often you get something very good. You know, I think that, that stems out of them having very good chemistry and knowing each other for such a long time. You know, you can't replicate that kind of, uh, that kind of relationship and chemistry. And this is your first time working with them, right? Oh, I've worked with Simon quite a few times on some other things. Um, me and Doug have worked together. Uh, Doug, Doug's also a production designer. So uh, we've worked on a few projects um, with him as a production designer. But uh, no, I've worked, with, I've worked on a few features and a few uh, TV uh, series with Simon and, uh, and a couple with uh, Ken as well. So we're all, you know, we've all got some, uh, we've all got, all, all got degrees of, uh, of history going back with each other. Wow, that's good. That's that's really good. It's good. We've 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 got a lot of shit on each other. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we all, we all know where There's we all nobody, know where the yeah. we all know where the bodies are buried. Yeah, yeah they're in Wayne Newton's front yard. The good thing is, is that we really truly all like each other, and, and it makes a big difference. Oh man, uh, you know, yeah, we, I, we enjoy I each tell. other's company. You know, we'll go to breakfast together. Maybe have a stop at a local pub and have a few after the shoot. Uh, but we enjoy being with each other. I, I think never, that's I never got invited to the pub. Well done, Ken. You just told <laughs> about the pub trip. Now, <laughs> now look, we went to the pub. We were just checking locations. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, wow. we, had, we, we had a drink while we were there, but just to check it out, Doug, Doug, don't be like that. Oh, now get him back, done, get man. him back. <laughs> just a couple more questions. Now, this is going to open up in theaters or video on demand. Uh, I forgot my notes on that. Uh, it's, Paul. It's, uh, uh, so it had a, it had a limited uh, theater release um, in about 60 movie, movie theaters across about 20 states back in November and December. It was quite limited because obviously it was between various states of lockdown depending on what state you're in right. um but you know some people got to see it which is good and now we're approaching on um, on the 20th of april this month uh it's the dvd and vod release so it'll be available on your usual platforms itunes google play um amazon and also if you're if you're still in the market for physical media as a lot of people are i do like having a dvd you know to put on the shelf um, you can get that on Amazon as well. So DVDs are available on Amazon and uh, it's available digitally on all those other platforms. And, and let me ask you this too also, with all these different platforms now, are you able to make money? There, uh, yeah, so th the market has moved from, um, from uh, a lot of it has moved from DVD to online, but there's still, people are still buying movies, especially 
over the if you look at this past year and what's happened to the world sales of of of, of, of digital downloads and renting and all that kind of thing have gone up quite a lot because most people have been home and you know they haven't been able to go to the movie theater and you know and the, for a while tv networks weren't making new stuff so they were, it was just repeat so a lot of people were turning to film so there's still a market there for it um but i think the future is generally digital rather than dvd but uh while there's still physical media i'll still be buying it and ken as a producer also do you like this new way that films are selling now on video on demand of course dvds dvds make uh companies good money but now you got to go almost straight to video yeah. on demand well yes i do i mean it's pretty because it's a it, it becomes a formula you know what kind of budget you have to work with if you're just going to go right on demand because your return is perhaps not going to be that great uh, we're, we're hoping that, you know, in this, this is going to be an exception. We were extremely honored uh, to get a theatrical release on this, you know, even though it was in the middle of the, the, the COVID uh, situation, you know, to be able to be picked um, to actually go into movie theaters, that's not something that happens to independent uh, movie makers very often. No, so, it uh, doesn't. So, you know, that was a, a wonderful honor. But, you know, in talking to Doug here, uh, those honors don't pay the bills, you know, and, uh, and even though it's, it's, it's wonderful and I, and I probably enjoy that as much, uh, you know, it's all about trying to at least uh, make a little bit of money so that we can continue to film. And that's, you know, that's really what it's all about. And Doug and Simon, now you, uh, almost the whole world can see your film now that you wrote and, uh, you like that new way now that almost the whole world can see you now, not just stuck in movie theaters or not being in movie theaters, that the whole world can go video on demand, of course, DVDs too. Doug, Simon, did you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we heard you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different world, isn't it? Sort of, um, uh, but it, it's it sort of opens up everything sort of so whereas before if you didn't have a dvd release in japan you couldn't see the movie now streaming and downloads and so on and so forth so um, in some ways your audience actually got a great uh, great deal bigger right right I, much I get, bigger i get a little concerned about all the messages i get on the internet now it's uh, you know it, it's People leaving comments about your films and things like that. Well, or, yeah, some, uh, some of them are quite graphic. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Well, well wonderful. You got to deal with that. But I, you know, Doug's background is heavy in the theater, and <laughs> uh, you know, so and where where the script is sacred, son. You know, it it really is the most important thing, a starting point, and. Um, I would imagine Doug's got to be thrilled to get his uh, to get his uh, screenplay up mm -hmm. there. Oh, Ken, in all seriousness, which I'm not good at, which we all know, I, I'm totally baffled, amazed, and honoured whenever anyone wants to make anything I write or buy it or watch it. I really am. I'm somewhat humbled by it, and the, the humbleness tends to bring out the sarcasm. That's all. That's all I got to say. Oh, I too. That's baffled. great. That's great. Well, fellas, that's it for me. That's all the time I have. I wish I had another at least half hour. We can talk more about Stilling Chaplin, but uh, I'll put this up and let people know how they can watch it and let them see the great fun we just had here at yeticket.com with you four talented people. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Al. Appreciate it. Thank you, Al. And peace and success to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, everyone, Paul, everybody. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks. This is your entertainment ticket. Latest and greatest movie review.